Thank you and welcome everyone. Uh, and uh, thanks for joining us on the third um, talk series. Um, this talk series um, is number three. The first one was on uh, climate storytelling or climate lens in film and TV. And the second one we had on site uh, also about climate story storytelling, how to bring uh, climate storytelling uh, or climate stories out of the news page to popular culture. So this is our third one. Uh, so we will learn about... Um, sustainable filmmaking, and we will learn from the expert. So I hope we are all set. And uh, today I would like to thank uh, Kunvenda Pratum Rod Wongwararak for being a Thai interpreter. She's in the Thai channel. And um, so let me uh, talk a little bit about CCCL Film Festival. I'm sure most of you already know who we are. And just in case a few people uh, who just join us, uh, CCCL Film Festival is a platform. Uh, we are trying to do more than film festival. We are trying to uh, organize activities like this, talks and uh, workshop and, uh, you know, get us on speed. Um, so sharing, you know, uh, find, um, create a space where we can share and learn from each other and uh, to find out new things, what we can do, how do we share stories about climate change impact, you know, on people's lives and communities and uh, about climate resilience or any innovative uh, response or action, you know, anywhere. So we like to hear all kinds of uh, climate stories. Uh, in order for us to share, to have the issue of uh, uh, climate crisis, you know, uh, being in the discussion in uh, society and uh, also to support emerging, especially emerging uh, young or not so young filmmakers who are interested in telling stories that uh, impact all of our lives. So, um, before we get into uh, um, the the talk here, I would like to remind uh, us that we are open for submission uh, for short films for climate uh, uh, for CCCL Film Festival 2025, which will be held in February next year. So it's open until 15 October. Uh, just a reminder, and. Uh, also, I would like to thank our partners and sponsors. Um, our sponsors are Siam Canadian and our um, donor, uh, Peter Eric Dennis, uh, and Heinrich Burl Stiftung Southeast Asia for uh, supporting us uh, this year, and also years past as well. And now let me introduce our speaker for today, uh, David Kerr here. Thanks, David, for coming to uh, have a discussion with us. It's it's my pleasure. Yeah, David is in Chiang Mai right now. I am, uh, by the way, I am at Busakon. I am uh, um, a CCCL team leader and I'm in Bangkok. And uh, I think uh, many of you are coming from all over the place. Okay. So let me introduce Dave, Kun David. David is a one of the few people in Thailand, probably in the world, um, who is working on uh, how to make film production sustainable. You know, and uh, his recent works is a um, this big project. Uh, Alien Earth season one, uh, which is a series that uh, uh, that was just shot, just finished shooting, right? You, yes. you, you yes. been we just, we just finished shooting on two weeks ago, so yeah. it's, it's, we're we're still in wrap, and and we have, I think there's going to be well, six months, five months more of wrap. Fortunately, I'm done this week. Congratulations, it must have been uh, quite an accomplishment, uh, a very big project, right? You have like more than a thousand people 
involved? Yeah, we had, I mean, depending on the day, we, we had over a thousand people. I was, uh, I, the, yesterday I was realizing that we actually gave out 1,700 stainless steel water bottles. <laughs> oh, okay, so that's about the number, right? <laughs> and that's, that didn't include extras, so. Wow. We, we we had definitely had a lot of people. Um, I mean, it has to be framed also in the fact that we started in 2023, mm -hmm. and were would have been finished uh, probably the beginning of January. But because of the SAG after strike, we were on pause for six months. So shooting began again in February first for and then finished you know two weeks ago so it's been a long project you know and and I think it's it's been um a huge learning experience for everybody involved I mean this is the, one of the largest projects if not the largest project ever shot in Thailand so yeah and uh, we would like to learn from uh, this make a project like this how did you try to make it clean and green and sustainable how is it possible you know so another project that david also worked on as a sustainable sustainability coordinator was for a netflix project mother of the bride that was shot in phuket right yes yes mm -hmm. yeah as and, a matter of fact um, i went i went directly from that project right into alien wow so you have a lot of experience to uh, to share with us so uh david uh was um I'm born in uh, America and grew up in in British Columbia, right? Yes. And uh, you you grew up with nature, so I'm sure that that uh, uh, have kind of uh, built you into who you are today, being interested in uh, you know sustainable side of uh, of of work, even in even though you you're working in in film. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, nature did inform much of who I am in terms of how I see the world. But also, I think what I've come to is, is that, you know, nature is our home. And one of the things about sustainability and, and film, but also in our everyday life, is that it's it's. I think it's really important to remember that that as our home, we 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 collectively need to start reminding ourselves that that of taking care of it and you know and in in the way that you know I always think that when you come home for example 95 percent of people wouldn't throw trash into their kitchen or on the floor or in their bedroom or and yet for some reason when we are out in the world there's just mm -hmm. much less mindfulness about how we treat the environment as opposed to how we treat our home when in fact it's an extension there isn't there isn't uh i mean there's a wall which keeps us dry but that's just a, a physical barrier so i think you know from from my perspective um the way i look at at uh sustainability in film is also trying to i mean it, it you know the scale is huge but but i think about our, I think it's our home. So I want, I, I try to to bring that awareness to to production. Yeah, I think that is a very interesting point. And I think a lot of times, you know, and um, people uh, maybe need to be reminded that we all have this. We share the same home, the yeah. same, and it is, you know, the uh, it's it's a big one. But actually, you are right that we don't uh, pollute our own home, or we try not to. But why would you do that once you step outside, right? So um, interesting. And uh, I'd actually, I would like you to, to talk a little bit more of how did you come to work in the work that you do right now? Because we do have a question from uh, <laughs> our participants that uh, um, I think one person asked, uh, what, what do I have to study to do a job like this? Can you tell us a little well, bit? Well, I had a very circuitous route so and also please uh, remind me to slow down or stop if you need to translate um so i i i had a very circuitous route i i actually i was a massage therapist for many years um i i went to massage school in america and i studied many modalities and part of my commitment was to do always do work that I felt like was to do no harm and to try to improve people's lives. But I, I felt 
that massage wasn't intellectually stimulating for me enough and 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 I did it for quite a while so I went back to to college and I I went and I, I had a master's in environmental leadership um and I worked in nonprofits in in the US and California uh, especially around uh recycling and <clears throat> working with young people um which is very daunting actually uh, the, to to work daily in in recycling, and I, this was a nonprofit also for for uh, youth who were who were going through a, a hard time. Or um, so uh, it posed multiple challenges, but for me it was also very engaging. And and then I uh, some other life stuff took a break from that and. Uh, came back to Asia. I had actually uh, spent time in Asia in 2000, 2001. So I was familiar with here. I taught English. Actually, I taught English at, at the, at the um, Bangkok Hospital and Samitave Hospital. Um, I taught nursing staff uh, medical English. <laughs> uh, Interesting. Very uh, eclectic experience. Huh? Eclectic <laughs> experience, yeah. So I, I when I came back to, I worked in nonprofit in Myanmar. And for me, you know, sustainability has always been something that I've I've been interested in in how I live whether it's eating organic I always have tried to to integrate those ideals into my life so working in it going to school and it was just a natural extension um and then uh I had the opportunity to start working in film I ha I have a very I mean we could go on because I've I've also worked in film a little bit many years ago too peripherally so to to work with living films and be a sustainability advisor for them but also to work on 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 uh some documentaries and and to uh do on the development side was you know I think my master's degree also helped me kind of create a skill set in terms of writing and 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 uh, working uh, in that way, um, so I brought those skills to 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 the to film world, and and then this you know this last few years because sustainability has become more, especially after I think the pandemic or during the pandemic, there's more awareness, um, and so. To but it's be still able... it's still quite a new. Uh, thing everywhere, right? Not just Thailand. The sustainable yeah. making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think what what's changing now is that 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 Netflix and Disney and and other studios are committing to net zero goals. So, and Disney has a net zero goal of two thousand thirty. I think that's a very ambitious. From what mm -hmm. I've seen, I, I, but it's it's a, and the and the point is these goals are are helpful for for really pushing forward. Do, do, you, do you think is it really meaningful in like the practical sense, not just like uh, you know corporate responsibility, you know social responsibility kind of thing? Yeah, I mean it's, I I think it, it, yes, I mean, and the scale is huge. I mean I'm, when I look at what so this production is the first time that we've had a sustainability uh, supervisor on, in Thailand on something of this scale. I mean, the Netflix project was much smaller and was in some ways a beginning. But um, what I realized is that like, so, and I mean, I'll talk about this a little bit in my presentation, but, but you know, we've managed to, to divert so far 100 tons of waste from the landfill. Um, uh, before in, in other productions, that waste would have just gone to landfill there. And there wasn't, there wasn't a, a structure for it. There wasn't a mandate. I mean, in terms of having myself, I had a budget, but it's very small. Um, but I looked at like all the things that I could potentially do and identified some key areas where I thought we can really make a difference. And yes, you know, I mean, can we right now on like diesel use in vans, probably not so easy, but in terms of our waste, in terms of, of, of promoting recycling and getting our bottle reduction down, yes, we can do stuff. And, and we can also, and, and a big part of it is also education by even, I mean, this, 
speaking with you guys is born out of the work that we did on the alien project. So, so it's, it's awareness and visibility are important. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, so I think for this alien project for, uh, Evex in Disney, right. Yeah. Um, this project for the first time has a real, uh, sustainable sustainability budget. Yes. Okay. Yes. And and uh, in terms of uh, capacity building, like uh, education with the staff and the crew, I mean, how do you balance? Did, did you really have time or any, any space to work with the staff and the crew? I think it's a work in progress. I would have liked to work more with the staff. I think mm -hmm. a lot of what we were doing was, was relationship building, mm -hmm. you know, the culture of film in Thailand is particular to Thailand and to step into it with uh, a mandate of saying you have to do this doesn't work. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of what we did was sort of soft, like working, like I worked with all the departments, but I'd talk to them and then kind of go back and talk to them. I think what they need to see is that we were actually committed to doing it, that, that this isn't just a job for me. So mm -hmm. that part of that is just right now is kind of laying the groundwork for future productions in many ways. I mean, I'm really proud of, of our waste diversion. Um, and, and that, that took a lot of, of, of research. We didn't, um, we didn't have, you know, when we went into this, we, it wasn't like we had vendors that we just go call and go, okay, come do this. We went through multiple different companies and to, to try to find ones that could handle the, the waste. And, and more particular, we have a huge amount, production uses a ton of styrofoam for set design and for props and, and things like that. And this is globally. So for us to, uh, find a vendor that would uh, divert the foam and, in, and through incineration um, was really, really a big deal. And, and it's not, doesn't even happen very often in North America either. It, 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 it's location dependent. Mm. I wonder if the, did you get uh, much support from the local government, you know, like maybe uh, in terms of waste facility? Um, we haven't, I, I think that that's still, uh, I mean, certainly the government has uh, uh, visited the set. I don't think sustainability has been promoted as much as it could have. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I I think that that I noticed that there was a Bangkok article, and I don't know when it came out, maybe just a few months ago, about um, the Thai government uh, speaking to sustainability in film. I think particularly because of the um, uh, right now, I mean, there's a lot of production in Thailand in the last few months. There is White Lotus, uh, there is, uh, and it's, and then there's also, it's not supposed to be out there, but Jurassic Park, um, which is being floated as another name. Um, and these are large productions. And so, uh, but they're films. So they're, 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 well, I'm sorry, White Lotus is a, is not, White Lotus is a, um, but some of that is filmed other places as well. So, but these productions, I think I also offer an opportunity to Thai government to say, we don't want something like the beach to happen again, right? Like we, everybody knows oh, about the right, story. But, but, but isn't there some kind of uh, <laughs> controversy about the way that uh, the kind of the set is being changed? And then I am not sure about that. I heard a little bit about it. I think that Jurassic about, about, yeah, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I, I, you know, don't know anything about the production. Um, although randomly we have to visit, uh, uh, not, not on purpose, a part of the set because we were going to, to see a cave and, and mm -hmm. <laughs> stumbled on a set. But, um, I, I think that that. You know, I mean, one of the reasons why I'm on this production and one and also, you know, Living Films cares a lot about the environment as well. So they're they're supportive of me as in, you know, and and and, and it, it's also a very big production. And and I think um, 
we're all learning and and i i know that that like i said this is for us this is really laying the groundwork for for i mean we hope a season 2 but also for future future productions in terms of what we can accomplish and and what's next Mm. I think another thing that many of us in this room may be uh, thinking of is, you know, obviously a huge production, makeup productions like uh, what you just finished um, would require serious attention in terms of reducing emissions, right? But how can, how does that really apply to small productions, I mean, like uh, the footprints are like uh, incomparable. So, what, what, <laughs> what should small films? I, I, I don't, uh, I don't be I mean, concerned about it at scale, all. Scale is is. I, I totally appreciate this, the question, and scale is, you know, in some ways they're no different. I mean, they are in the sense of the manpower and the amount of funding and and those kinds of things. But on a small production you actually have a lot more leeway in terms of how how to to create a sustainable production you you know from the get go you can have conversations uh in in pre-production around what kind of sustainability goals to have i mean you can look at you know just you know it's it's much easier to use reusable water bottles it's much easier to to order to 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 you know use as le the least amount of plastic as possible it, as long as everybody's on board right so a lot of it is making sure people are on board and then it's looking at you know if you're a small team for example you don't need big generators to run production so or if you do you can look at very carefully at what your energy requirements are. There's a lot of small um, battery packs now that are available. Like we, for example, uh, our drone teams started using small battery packs where they're able to just use battery packs for their drone shoots. And, and then uh, when, when we first started shooting in, in last year, um, I went on location with the drone team and and normally they would have a small gas generator and we were able to avoid using it at, at all. So so those are small things that that you can look at doing. I mean, there are companies that will rent those now, um the like up to 3400 watt and 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 there are more bigger ones like 64 I don't know if there are, are coming to Thailand yet. But those those are rentable, so that a production didn't have to buy them. I mean, we obviously had the resources to buy those, but you can rent them now um, for you know three or five days or a week or you know for something short. And then I think um, uh, sustainable packaging in terms of of food food when there's catering is is thinking about what you know you, what how, how food is is managed and 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 um those are also factors uh things like biodegradable plastic bags and utensils using bamboo utensils you know we we had bamboo stir sticks i know that sounds silly but but things like that those small things really make an impact because like stir sticks and plastic little things like that are the, the are what ends up in landfills but in the oceans and waterways and and so those small things can really um they're impactful and, yeah, and they add and, up right <laughs> yeah yeah i mean and it's yeah. it's it's that single use plastic right so getting on a single use plastic um I think. Right. I, I think single use plastic is, is an, an obvious one and no one really should use it. However, um, for like really small projects like our grantees, you know, you have like really small, tiny budget. Yeah. What does it mean? How does it translate to, uh, you know, costs? Well, I think it's about being creative. So like in set design, you know, like some of our big sets were sourced from uh uh Watson Cow and and also from uh Talat Noi in Bangkok where there's all these all these you know used metal 
um, engine parts and gears and those we so we bought tons of that kind of stuff and and wove that into the the um sort of the, the fabric of the of the sets and 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 so those those kinds of things are um it's it, it's really about creativity i think and 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 i think you know like when i came onto production I didn't have a blueprint. I mean, I, I had a blueprint in the sense of like the, they'll share some information through the green production guide and Albert, which is the UK version of, of the American green production guide. And they provide checklists. They provide um, a, a way to go through and say, okay, here's, there's this, there's this, there's this, can we, and, and those are, those are sort of a template or, or a, a you know, a guidelines and then it's about being creative. And, and I think that that's no matter what size that, you know, I mean, it's not like I had, a, you know, a $5 million budget or a million dollar budget. I mean, I had to really think about what, what I could do, what was possible. Um, and that's where uh, I did a lot of research about, you know, uh, you know, for the styrofoam, initially we started out with a company I mean, I was so happy to find a company that actually recycled clean styrofoam. The problem is that the scale we have is so big that for us to uh, manually sort out the, all the clean styrofoam, <laughs> it's just, it, we tried doing that and it was too much. And then, um, so, but it, it, it's, you know, that came through research and and some, some of that's just, it's just legwork and, and doing the work. Mm. Um, actually, I, I think you have something that you could share with us in terms of what are the key things that you may be going into uh, some practical uh, guidelines a little bit? Like what do you yeah. do for uh, on set uh, that apply to production, whether big or small? Um, well, I think, you know, I mentioned some of the things that like, you know, very basic stuff to begin with is late is 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 um uh you know posters and visibility um signage uh in Thai and English um you know reminding people to recycle uh I think that that it, you know we had uh water dispensers at catering and craft services. We tried to have water dispensers in the office. We had, you know, we looked at those nuts and bolts things like um, where we sourced our paper from, you know, printer paper. So you try to order sustainable printer paper. Uh, in if you're using wood for any kind of set building, uh, ordering, you know, looking at where you can order sustainable sourced wood. Sometimes that's more expensive. Um, the other other options are looking at you know are there places where you can find uh um you know wood that's been been like uh not like used wood or wood that's come from from building projects that can be reused um uh you know we um we like we for for we purchased the sets from Shantaram, for example, some of the sets, some of the materials from sets we reused. So so looking at at those kinds of things, um, uh, are, you know, there are materials out there. I think rent, looking at where possibly you can rent costumes from or or buy used clothing Um and 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 to to use for costumes so uh or or you know those are very basic things but but those kinds of things add up and then also at the end of production how do you you know minimize your waste so that you're either donating to to nonprofits to temples so that that those things can be either by reused or if they're beyond reuse that they you know like for fabric they can go to to nonprofits that use the fabric to make things, um, 
So it's looking at kind of the whole supply chain from beginning to end and thinking about what how things can be reused and and um uh yeah. How how do you think uh the small productions like independent uh filmmakers uh or emerging you know uh young filmmakers who are uh interested in um practicing uh sustainability how did you get into this how 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 would you start well i think it you know like these these the 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 green production guide and albert have a lot of resources for maybe, filmmakers. maybe i'm sorry maybe can we share a ccc yeah. Oh, yeah. okay uh, or david can can we share the resources so i believe somebody on your end is going to provide uh, some links so that that people will be able to access but so this first uh is that, that I the first slide I have up here is from the, the sustainable production guide or green production guide. Um, and they give, as it says, it's a note to filmmakers and getting started with sustainable production. Um, and the basic principles behind greening production include conserving fuel and energy, avoiding toxins, pollution, saving water, reducing plastics, preventing landfill waste, and implementing these these principles on set where time and money uh, are, are you know critical. Um, the key also is to identify priorities and challenges before production begins, which is kind of what I was speaking to earlier, which is that you know in the beginning stages, um, that's the ideal time to think about um, sustainability uh, measures. Um, and then there's something called the Peach Guide, which is uh, embedded uh, within the, the Green Production Guide, and that is the Production Environmental Actions Checklist. Um, and that's a very thorough checklist that you that productions can go through, and they can actually apply for a green seal within that as well from the Green Production Guide. Um, I think for small productions, it's maybe a little bit too expensive, but but the tools within it are are totally free. All the tools are free, and and really the resources are are probably the most. Um, uh, I think they they offer more than than anything out there, and 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 it saves doing a lot of research because this has so much information, um, and the Albert. Uh, training guide, which is the UK version, also offers, I mean, they offer training that you can go through and get a, a, a certification. Um, it's a, it's not a huge training program, but it does provide some information that, that, and, and, and a kind of a, in a, in a course framework that's really helpful, um, especially if you're not coming with a sustainability background, it just, helps to to fill in the blanks and and provide more information um i think that that you know like it, it, here it's um you know talking about engaging filmmakers and funding um uh and, you know having crew a crew member or um somebody who's who's whose tasks was sort of tracking it um and if it's a very small production it, you know, obviously there are people who do multiple jobs. So um, maybe this is more about a collective action that that happens. But, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, vendors is is in the beginning, you're looking if you're for sustainable materials. Uh, at the end of, of, of my presentation, I'll provide a few vendors um, that, that people can, can grab. Um, and then it's looking at uh, you know monitoring your your waste diversion, um, knowing where your waste is going to go uh, is important. Uh, and and like so by the time by the time you know we, we took it took us a long time in terms of of our research to find uh, sustainable um, uh, you, you know vendors in in terms of managing our waste. But we needed to have that. So even though while construction was happening, uh, we had pickups, but when the sets begin to strike, 
that's a critical time because all of a sudden there's a huge amount of material that needs to be handled. I mean, we have truckloads of material going out daily. And so we needed to have that vendor in place to handle that material ready to go. So, um, uh, and then, you know, there's a something called PAIR, which is a production environmental accounting report. And that's, that's also uh, a more, maybe a little more demanding and that that's working with accounting on tracking uh but that takes a certain structure to support that but it's yeah, yeah. Talk, talking sorry to to interject talking about tracking how can you tell us a little bit for uh small production yeah, how I do mean, you, I think... do you track your footprint yeah, the so the green production guide and also the Albert offer tracking. They they the especially Albert has a has a uh, they have a tracking uh, seminar that's easy to access and and really I would point you towards them because it's is, really is it free? Can yes, can it's free. join? It's free. Oh, great. Yeah. You just have to sign up ahead of time. Um, they they have slots and and you you pick a date and you know it, but it's but it's free. So it's great. Um, Do you have any idea how long it is? The, the uh, it's about an hour, oh, okay. I believe. So um, uh, it, it maybe and uh, maybe two hours. I can't remember, but not not long. Um, Okay, there are quite a few people in uh, among the participants are interested. How do you track the footprints and you know? Yeah, and I'm not going to go into it too much right. other than the yeah. point of the direction because it's it's really you know. So the well, one thing I say is that like if you're tracking your airfare, uh, there's very easy airfare trackers online. You can just type. You can even do a quick. I, I I should have included that, but you can do a quick search, and mm -hmm. and you can you can put in your you know from from your destination, and you will get the the um uh the the CO two for for that flight and and can you can you give us a few examples of how you reduced, I mean other than waste that is obvious how do you reduce. Uh, the, the no, on this production, our 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 reduction of CO two was minimal, and and partly, I mean, this is partly to do with plane fare, but although we do offset that with with um, um, uh, carbon offsets, but in one of the challenges in Thailand is that that you know diesel generators are used extensively. In North America and Europe, they're phasing out diesel generators. They have large battery packs that that are like 120 kVA, 200 kVA, 300 kVA that power production. And but they're expensive. And and but at the same time, uh, their their reduction in fuel costs is offsetting. So they're now like a you know if you if they're used for longer term they definitely start to pay for themselves so tracking um fuel use and and in is i think a challenge here again because the the um there isn't the technology integrated yet into thailand to support uh electric generators i mean we we did um, get a grant for one, and we did integrate it into a production, but it was just one, and it's a 45 kV, and it's a smaller unit, so so that has some mitigation. But um, uh, in terms of transportation, uh, most of the our transport van, I mean, if all are diesel. Um, in other countries, they're using biofuels and and uh, to to run and 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 there's a sort of a, an infrastructure to support that. B twenty diesel, which is available here in Thailand, um, is uh, unfortunately is is mostly comes from from palm oil. I mean, it's it's feedstock is palm oil, which is not the most sustainable. Um, so. In terms of of uh, CO two emissions and fuel reduction, uh, we probably weren't able to impact as much as I would hope. Um, but part of that's is is really due to the infrastructure. 
Right. Did you use any EVs? We did. We we did have uh we we sourced we got a grant to uh, integrate one EV van for the length of production and still being used in wrap. Um, I think the next production we will have. I hope maybe three or four. The challenge in Thailand is, is that traditionally drivers and vans come together and there's a whole network that supports that. And so moving to EVs, even rentals is complicated because then you have to pay for a driver uh, individually and that creates challenges within the structure of other drivers. And so right. there we're trying to figure that out right now. We don't have, you know, it's it's a, you know, we don't want to, to, you know, encourage drivers to have to go into debt to do something. You know, I mean, it's and this is this is something that's it's a work in progress. And wow. you know, even with our our single EV, at, at times um, charging. I mean, we we created a charging kind of. Uh, process that, 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 that worked, but, but it's, it's not seamless. And, 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 you know, when we have, you know, I mean, I think we can handle five EVs, but, but at that point, like, for example, none of the studios have charging stations. So the studios need to invest in charging stations and, and they need to be encouraged to do that. And that's where, you know, even Disney providing funding for our EV, you know, we we can use that and say, hey, to the studios, can you please, you know, provide charging stations? It, it, this is, you know, like I said, this is, it's, it's a, it's a work in progress. I mean, even, you know, one of the things that's happening in the UK, in North America is that, that many studios are integrating hundred percent renewable power. They have solar that runs our studios. They have so when you're on set, you tap into green energy, and 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 that which is trackable. We don't have that here yet, and and um, there are uh, some studios which apparently there are 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 that are under consideration to be built, which would would integrate solar power and and right. you know, but it's it's important to understand that. That you know, there's a there's more awareness out there than there is capacity right now. Mm. Um, are, are more films being shot in studio on set, and uh, not on uh, your location? The majority yeah. of 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 Alien was shot uh, in in studio locations, mm -hmm. and and although we did shoot in Krabi on location, <laughs> we also shot in in various locations around Bangkok. Did that help with the uh, uh, emissions? Um, no, because we don't we don't have access yet to 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 um, to non diesel generators that that can. Um, I mean, basically, we we need power, and um, I I would say that one of the biggest things that we did do, which cost us millions of dollars, um, is we went to. 80% LED lighting. So all of our set lighting was oh. LED, which is a massive, we we sourced lights from all over Southeast Asia for this production. Um, and it it was a huge effort and, and that helped mitigate and save a, a, a huge amount of money in terms of energy costs, in terms of, of and, and that is something uh, that potentially could be tracked. It, it's um uh it's a little complicated because the, of of the translation of of lighting into diesel fuel costs into savings <laughs> um but but in terms of just uh reducing our electricity demand um led lighting is really critical is that something that small productions can adopt as well you think um, it depends on their on yes. I mean, you can rent you can rent lighting for sure. There's that that's the one one thing that is available through rental companies here. Absolutely, and and you know, and then also, it it saves on on you know on on diesel costs. Um, I think, uh, 
you know, we, this production, like I said, we sourced a lot of lighting from, from other, from other countries as well, and even brought stuff in from New Zealand. And um, so uh, it, it's, I think um, it's a, it's a work in progress. I think that, you know, it really depends on, on the budget. I, I, um, I would, what I would like to see is, is some of the production houses uh, helping support small filmmakers, uh, you know, in, 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 I mean, it would be nice to see like some kind of grant, but, but that's not, you know, I don't have any, any control over that. I mean, I think that, that, you know, um, independent filmmakers are definitely challenged when it comes to affording, you know, equipment and, and integrating. Um, but, you know, anything that you can reduce uh, energy costs can also lower, you know, the, the budget. Right. And maybe I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going out on a limb here, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, uh, production like living films, company like living films, uh, may have a lot of resources in terms of set, right. And materials or equipment. Is it, is there any possibility yeah, that traditionally like that? Traditionally, we don't. We actually expand and contract per production. We we this production we did purchase uh, some battery units, which is the first time we've we've actually. I mean, but but some of that's through Disney, so they're not ours technically right now. They're they're productions. Um, generally, we never purchase stuff. It it's all it's all rented, uh, and and some productions are different some some uh companies will purchase their own um uh lost the the word for it but um uh camper vans are, are used a lot for 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 actors and things like that so um those uh will be purchased and rented by some companies. We haven't done that. Um, uh, I, it's something that we're thinking about. I think that if we did go down that route, probably uh, we would consider battery units um, because they don't require a lot of maintenance and and they're green. And, and so it fits within our model. But I think that that's, that's a it's premature to even go there really it's it's um but no we don't and and you know one of the things that that one of the the um set decorators from the UK was complaining about when they came to Thailand was that in in North America and the UK there are huge uh rental companies and they rent everything for film i mean down to salt shakers, to 70s paraphernalia, to rugs, to to wall hangings, to lighting, to um, old toasters, to, um, mm -hmm. I mean, everything from the last 50 years that you need for period production or, you know, old cars to clocks, whatever it is in in you know, there's huge uh warehouses in 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 LA and they and now that is rented so in in Bangkok they don't have that i mean you have to go buy that and then and then sell like from it from junk shops and places yeah, like that? yeah you have to go source it and and so it's it, th there is an opportunity out there yeah, for the business opportunity there for some yeah, there's a big opportunity to... there <laughs> for, for for enterprising people um if right. you're out there please <laughs> um, yeah um actually there it is a lot of questions i do have however i would like to uh invite uh participants maybe some of you have questions please feel free to send in questions uh I don't know when, uh, do you have any more to share or discuss and uh, we uh, could open for questions at some point? Yeah, I have a couple, of, there's a few things I'd like to discuss. Um, uh, just to to maybe show just some, a, a few visuals for, for people to, to see, you know, and just to speak a little bit about, you know, um, 
reusable water bottles and, and plastic waste. So we also worked with Green Park uh, and Wat Chak Deng, um, and I'm pronouncing it Wat, Wat um, maybe you can pronounce it correctly. I, I don't know what, what a temple. Wat Chak Deng is a temple in Bangkok. They are one of the most um, progressive um, uh, organizations or temples on sustainability that I have seen in Thailand. They, oh yeah, maybe, maybe they're monks who make uh, like fabrics from plastics. Is that that temple? Yes, is is that temple? What's one um, girl? I see. Okay. And What's so one? the the t-shirt in the picture that I'm wearing, we sourced from Watson, uh, but it's not Watson Cow. It's what what no? uh, uh, what Chak Dang and what Chak. Maybe Watson Cow also does the same thing. I'm not sure, <laughs> but. The the in the picture uh, you can see that uh, we we worked with um, in Studio Park, so we donated our plastic bottles that we collected at Studio Park to the temple. Um, they uh, and then the T-shirt that I'm wearing was made by the temple from plastic water bottles. Yeah, I think I've heard of that the uh, plastic mm -hmm. fabrics. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the, but what Chak Dang, I just want to promote for a second because they are, they have almost 100% solar. They have a electric pickup truck that they use for pickups and donations. They uh, have a full um, you uh, training, like you can go, like it would be if for people in Bangkok, it's a really great place to go learn about sustainability. So the things that we're talking about, you can go see in action there. And you can help, and 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 also, they can help in terms of picking up materials, um, uh, donations. Uh, they're a great organization to support. Singapore has also partnered with them. They have provided them with uh, some um, recycling technology, and also a boat on the very high tech boat that will pick up plastic off the Chao Phraya, mm -hmm. and and that is a, a great addition. So. They are probably the most, like I said, the most progressive organization right now doing work. Um, I this next, so I wanted to show this slide because you can see the foam uh, and and our efforts to uh, to to divert that from the landfill. I I really can't emphasize how important it is to keep things out of the landfill. People, I don't think. I, well, I, I want to. I talked about this earlier, but I, I, I'm curious what people know about landfills. If anybody out there has any any comments, yeah, please <laughs> feel they, free. They, I think a lot of people don't think of landfills in in day to day life, do they? Right. So, so the reason why landfills are bad is because when stuff goes to the landfill, it leaches out. Uh, um, chemical contaminants right. and that leaches into waterways it, it uh, wildlife and and animals uh, end up um, and and people are exposed to those contaminants and it's it's very toxic uh, in addition to that um, the the uh, it cur landfills create methane methane is one of the worst uh, uh, sort of gases relating to climate change and global warming. It's worse than CO2 right. because 10 it, times worse, right? Something like and, that. Yeah. It's 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 and so landfills um generate huge amounts of methane. And part of that comes from food waste, uh, which biodegrades, anything that's that that's sort of um organic that that ends up biodegrading in a landfill is creating methane. So uh diverting uh, material from landfills is critical, but also there, it's the reason for composting. And and we haven't yet started composting, but we are. It is one of our main goals in our next production. And and part of that's because there's very few companies that support it and can handle it on at scale. Um, uh, so the other part of of you can see there's a factory that we worked with recycle day is a company that 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 took all our waste and it goes to a and it goes and gets chipped um uh it it's you know to 
really it's just to, to keep things out of the landfill. I can't stress how important that is. Um, so. Um, I wonder the company, the vendors who uh, um, help, uh, you know, do the production uh, manage the waste, do they come every day? Or how does it work? For for, for our production, we, we had we sometimes had multiple pickups per day. Um, wow! I mean, it's a huge it's a huge. Uh, I mean, it's right. uh, hundreds of I mean thousands of dollars for this. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably the most expensive aspect of a sustainability was integrating this in. I mean, normally this this would be divert would go to the landfill um, directly. Directly, yeah, yeah. I mean, wood waste uh, would have would have traditionally been been separated out. Some wood waste would go, depending on who people that would come and collect it. And but but um, you have to remember that this is the first time we've done something at this scale too. So you know, ideally, if you have wood left over, like plywood that can be donated, right. hard, hardwoods or anything like that is great. Uh, we can't support having people come pick up stuff like that in this Ooh. scale. <laughs> and actually there are, um, you know, NGOs, I can think of at least one right now who would just go and pick them up. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. so we, we did a lot of research on that and mm -hmm. most, most uh, even NGOs, they just don't have the capacity and to mm -hmm. pick up and hold it for you because you need a place to take it. And, right. and and and, the, and we have so much. And so um, I think it's possible on future productions that, mm -hmm. that it's, a, it's also a, a cost and manpower thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are working with construction and unit and, and, and it's, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. So um, this is interesting. Um, uh, for the benefit of the participants, if you haven't, some of you may not have checked the chat room. There are lots of links to articles and to the you know uh, resources that we've been talking about in the chat box. Uh, some files, uh, presentation files as well. So uh, please do check. Okay, uh, that was a PA. So please do continue. Um, I'm I'm just going to this next slide of uh see if I can see that um so I just showing there's this is our our drone unit on on location um <clears throat> and you can see we have the battery uh there's the eco flow and then and then below we have a, a blue tea um and these are rentable um battery units that that small productions can use and uh you have to figure out what your power re requirements are. Um, but for small projects, they they can and and it's great because uh, you can also uh, get solar panels that can support powering them at the same time if you're on a on a on a remote location. Um, and uh, th th so it's important um, for just for awareness that 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 those can be used and and are accessible. Um, So here's a picture of our 45 kVA battery unit on the back of the, the truck. And, and that gives you a sense of the, the, how big it is. <laughs> um, and, and that's, you know, still very small, very, very small in terms of its ability to power. I mean, we, we you know, it's barely strong enough to power a craft services wagon for a day, but um, it can handle uh, for a small, location um it can handle uh that no problem so um and again here's our the this is a small blue tee with solar panels attached uh and and that will uh keep uh depending on what's what you're powering but that can help um maintain a charge throughout the day um how how are we on time? I've lost track of time. Um, I, I wanted to uh, also point to the, there's a the, a link. I think that they this doesn't show up on the screen here. Um, Sundance 
uh, has a, a, a strong environmental film program, and and they uh, they take submissions, and they're a, an interesting resource for for independent filmmakers um, around environmental storytelling, and they they strongly support that. So I would encourage people to go to to uh, the Sundance, uh, and I think that that link is up there. Um, also, the uh, UN uh, Environmental Program. Uh, I would really encourage exploring that. There's all kinds of information on on uh, um, environment and and sustainable. Um, I'm not sure what happened to the screen, but um, uh, and and so the, there's lots of information there, and it's accessible. There's lots of shorts too that are that are informative, but also uh, they're quick, like one and a half minutes, two minutes. And and that's and they're fun to to explore. And also, I think as filmmakers, it's really important to see what you can do in with shorts. I mean, I think that that they're powerful and they they can get a message across. And especially now with people's short attention spans, um, with with and and for sort of iPhones and things like that, it's a it's a really good tool to support and think about when in in you know in in doing filmmaking. Uh, I want to screen share again for a second because I wanted to uh, offer the, the, I don't know if the, uh, see what happens. Um, sure, where am I? Sorry, I'm not sure what happened to my. Is it some uh, a link video or file? Well, I just I want to to give people the the opportunity to take a screen grab of the vendor list. I see. Okay. You make make it a little bigger. I... Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I can't tell what. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, it's a little too big. Yeah, this is fine. I think uh, come down a little, pull it down a little. Yeah, okay. Sorry, it shows up different. My formatting is all weird on my end. So these are these are so you can see what Jack Dang is on there, and uh, and then um, the the. Uh, EV Me, which is the company we rented our, our EV van from, um, uh, Recycle Day, which is our main vendor for for all our recycling for, and and now uh, Recycle Day is now in Chiang Mai and working with uh, 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 Central um, Plaza, um, and uh, Advanced Bio. Is is where we uh, source a, a lot of our sustainable packaging from for catering and for on on set, so for food uh, service, for utensils, um, things like that. Um, you can you source from them, uh, and then the other uh, Hang Panit is a company that you can get sustainable wood products from as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Visrec was a team that we hired to do our uh, BTS work for from. So if everybody's got that, I'm I'm open to any questions and to if there's any, um, I, I would love to to answer anything I can. <laughs> yes, it's your chance. Uh, please send in the questions or just uh, you know raise your hand and ask. I think uh, a couple of uh, people may be interested in how do you talk to, to staff? How do you introduce sustainability filmmaking to the crew for the first time? I think, um, you know, sending a memo depending it's dependent it depends on how big your 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 crew is and and so and how you share information i mean i think for production 
scale such as ours, we had hundreds of people on, on multiple sets. So it's not like we were going to sit down and, and well, there's no way we could talk to her. I mean, there's, I didn't, you know, there's a thousand people. It's, it's so memos are the way that you share information. Um, uh, and then safety meetings. So uh, on, on sets, we have safety meetings every morning um, and we would provide information at safety meetings, encouraging people to recycle. Uh, uh, I think memos are probably, for example, we, we, uh, when we went to Krabi, you know, we, we reminded people to be sensitive to the environment and that we would be doing beach cleanups and, and that sort of thing. Um, I think initially, uh, you know, it depends on the tool that you're using to communicate with. And, and, um, that's one of the, the helpful things about the green production guide and, and Albert is that they offer, uh, you know, just some, some tools for, for doing that. But I think, you know, it's good to define to you, for example, you know, the first thing is, is looking at the, the, the easy things, right? Like reducing plastic water bottles. And are you going to have, like, can your production afford to, to give out reusable water bottles? Uh, you know, having a, a water dispenser uh, uh, so that, that, that people can, when they have water bottles, they can have a place to fill them, right? That's also critical because otherwise, you know, it, it, it's, um, I mean, we had a situation which was, you know, it just happens, but but the our actors had usable water bottles and they wanted to fill their water bottles. And so there's a, a, a big container and, um, I, I don't want to name, but, but some people, in, that were working just filled it up with plastic water bottles <laughs> so that so that the actors could fill their bottles from that so you, you know it's it's thinking it's it's sometimes it's not really understanding the big picture and 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 so the main thing you want to have is is large large refillable water bottles and 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 um uh and, and ways to ref and, and places to fill them. So I think that, that, uh, and then looking at, you know, paper. So, you know, and then sharing that is, is basically either an email and saying, here's, here's the things that we're going to do. We're going to provide water dispensers. We're going to have reusable water bottles. We're going to use recycled paper. Um, and, uh, but it's also, these conversations need to happen with the, you know, the producer, the director, the unit production manager, the coordinators. Um, those those key people need to be on board and and thinking about that. Um, and did you need to have a kind of company policy first? Well, in this production, you know, there's. Uh, I mean, because it was partly mandated by Disney, and I mean, there was a sustainability supervisor on set. So, so there was. So, was so that's my job to to right. share that information. Um, but it's also the job of production to support me. And and so, right. you know, if I don't get the support, and that's part of that relationship building, which needs to happen incrementally. <laughs> right. And I was going to ask, uh, what were the typical reactions when this subject was first introduced? I mean, I think you, you, you do it slowly. I mean, I think, you know, I, I know that, that for example, I didn't come on till later, like right at the end of pre-production. I mean, I should have been starting really next time I will start in pre-production because a lot of these things are, are, are best right. managed and integrated then. But they had already, you know, I mean, through conversations, I mean, I had been engaged in conversations with with producers in six months, eight months before around, you know, kind of what they were doing. And and so I, you know, knew, I mean, that they had some of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, conversations earlier. Our offices were at the Sintorn office building. So Sindhorn has a 
uh, recycling program already embedded in their office building. So they already were separating out bottles and cans <clears throat> and paper for recycling. And so all we needed to do was, was add our signage and to that. And so, um, so there's some familiarity with that. And then uh, once uh, uh, sort of, and then, and then you, you know, you're, you're copying that into like the, we have production offices at every studio when, and so those same, we have uh, recycling containers at, at, at the studio, we have recycling containers at, at, at uh, craft services, at, at, at catering, um, and with, with labeling. So it's more about, again, like at the safety meetings and, and then integrating it. And, and then it's a process of, you know, just reminding people. And, and, mm -hmm. and I, I think that, that over time things improved, you know, the studios themselves also help like green park is really proactive about, uh, providing um uh signage and also encouraging sustainability and and uh recycling so um so there it helps us a lot with that so it makes our job easier it also it, it's it's you know modeling it is important so if the studio is modeling it and we're saying hey it's important to do this then the people tend to fall in line Mm. at green yep. at, at, at moonstar not so much <laughs> so it was more on us to to make things happen and so it, it's it you know challenging let, let, let me ask you a question um we have two uh right now i have two questions that i want to ask from participants yeah. so what if your partners are not into sustainability so you have question. Sustainability yeah. isn't a top priority in the places <laughs> where I'm filming, and my partners don't share the same views. For example, they find renting more sustainable materials too expensive and troublesome. Any tips on how, how I can convince them otherwise? <laughs> this, is, this is complicated. I think, you know, looking, you, you, it's important to, it's why... Mm -hmm. Resources like the UN Environment Program are really helpful. My resources like uh, the, the Albert are helpful. Um, we are in the midst of massive climate change and all our actions matter. And so for people that say, oh, this doesn't matter or this doesn't, I think that part of that is um, uh, a willful choice to ignore sort of the, the 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 sort of the world around us. Uh so it's a tough thing. I think um do, do you think that evidence based uh, argument would help with people do you do, do I mean do you like a lot of things uh you try to convince people uh yeah. if, business sense you know it makes business sense if you do this if not short term long term yeah i mean i think it's about reminding people that we have a responsibility to care for the environment too yeah but then um, i mean unless you meet a uh, climate deniers then that's <laughs> and 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 you know but it's i think the reason why i started with the analogy of of our home right because people forget that you know it's it's that 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 our home is it's this is our home. So I think it's important to to kind of think about sort of analogies like that. I also think that that um, uh, if it's if if you're faced with somebody who's just unwilling, then you have to decide. You know, you have to to integrate your own. Like you, 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 you have your own water bottle, your own, you, you, if, if you do what you can individually that in ways that are visible, um, or you have to decide too, is this, do I want to be a part of this production? Um, 
it, I think it's it's a challenge though. I mean, we need to make money, you know, and this is our jobs. And, and and if you have a really incredible creative opportunity come along, if you're a cameraman, for example, and the director and the producers care nothing about sustainability, it's it's a challenge. I mean, I think that that you know there there isn't an easy answer other than than you know finding your way through individually. And also, hard. <laughs> well, and and but also looking that sort of understanding that there are resources out there, you know, I, I often felt, even with Disney hiring me for the this position and the support of producers, there are many times I felt alone on this production, and and I have an assistant who cares, and mm-hmm. but the weight of trying to make things is is on me, and. Honestly, like, I mean, every, when I first started, you know, people said, look, everybody's going to hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you are going to be the least popular person in production. <laughs> You're asking people to do more work and to change <laughs> habits and to do things differently. Yeah. And, and to some extent, that's the reality. And so one of the really nice things about talking to you and talking to other people that work in sustainability is, is it that there's a support, there's a network, and there's a reminder that, you know, also as filmmakers, that we are here to try to make a difference. And that's not an easy process. It's not like, oh, here's, you know, all these resources, and we're totally 100% behind you. It it takes <laughs> <some> work. <laughs> right, right. Uh, let me pick up another question that was uh, asked. Uh... Uh, a little while ago. David, can you say who you used for the incineration work? Well, we use Recycle Day and that that the the company is on the, and they worked with, uh, uh, I think they had, a, they sort of work with other companies too, but but they take all our, our material. Um, one thing I wanted to say a little bit is that, that incinerating Things like styrofoam is critical because styrofoam breaks down into such small particles. Like every beach I've been on in Thailand has little bits of styrofoam on it. Mm. If you look yeah. in the sand on the water line, it's everywhere in little tiny, tiny pieces. Turtles, birds, all are ingesting that. So mm. to to keep that away from making it airborne and and, and, and burning it is critical. What's also complicated is that uh, incinerators are not necessarily that clean, but right now in Thailand, it, it's it's a work in progress. Like, it, you know, to build uh, super clean incinerators with chemical scrubbers is very expensive. I think that they're starting to come online, but it's a it's also another part of awareness around issues that relate to sustainability and to to um uh working for a cleaner environment mm. let's come back to uh this um we we i asked you about support from local government um yeah. i'm sure you heard of a uh, soft power <laughs> policy with the new government uh with uh um uh, also a committee uh film is one of the what 12 or 13 industries being supported right so with thailand here's a question from one of the participants with thailand offering an incentive for co-production do they require international production to be responsible for waste and carbon footprints are there such uh requirements uh with the project that you just finished no not, no. not that we've heard of yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, matter of fact, one of the the things that we hope for uh, mm-hmm. the films and 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 us is that we, you know, we applied for a grant and we got a grant from from Disney to do a, a behind the scenes on sustainability. Um, mm-hmm. We can't release it until, uh, you know, until the series has been released because it's you know obviously it's behind the scenes, it's sensitive information and. Um, but we, one of our, you know, 
a goal would be to share this the behind the scenes with with um, the film commission to help create some guidelines around sustainable filmmaking. And I would love to see that. And, and, and you know, Living Films would, would love to support that 100%. Yeah, we, we uh, CCCL would would love to <laughs> uh, show that behind the scene, uh, you know. Yeah, we, we I mean, I hope that we well, can, my, yeah. one of my goals would be to show that or, you know, to, to submit that or show that um, not mm -hmm. as a, not as a, as a, a, a part of the contest but to, to just you know show it as something that could be motivational and, and right fun. so what kind of requirements do uh, the Thai government have for you know core production in in thailand i Does it have anything to do with environment uh, conservation recent sustainability nothing at all as far as i know there there aren't any any i mean i think well let me rephrase that because i i think there are some in the sense that that the the national parks are very you have to be very sensitive to to uh to plastic right well but also there's there's lots of of um things we can't do like explosions or 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 um mm -hmm. um you know, there's very strict controls around the kinds of scenes that we can do in terms of anything that 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 um, causes any kind of of damage to 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 trees or wildlife or anything like that is totally forbidden so permissions for shooting in national parks are stringent um and are are based on on scenes and on and script and and that that sort of thing um but in terms of uh overall production in as as of yet i i don't i haven't heard of of anything that that says no you know um along those lines netflix um uh shot a film in italy last year uh using only battery uh for for on on set and that was because the locations that they wanted to shoot forbid the use of diesel generators. Mm. Um, so they sourced uh, huge battery units and solar panels to run their, their um, for, for all their, their uh, power requirements for, for filming. Okay, I think that is something that, uh, that Thailand should, should consider. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, the, I mean, it's, the challenge is, is that so that forty five kVA unit, we got a grant to purchase that. That was the only one available for purchase in Thailand last year that I could find. Wow. So they are in Singapore. They're in Hong Kong. They need to be imported. We could have rented them from Singapore. Um, but given the time limit and the complications and 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 the, I mean, very expensive. I mean, Thirty-five, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month. Right. What about other countries in Southeast Asia? I, like I, Thailand? Don't, I don't know. I, I, I mean, Malaysia is closer to Singapore, so my suspicion is, I mean, they could get things more easily there. But I don't think their film industry, the Thai film industry, has more infrastructure, uh, and and so, um, but I, I don't know enough to be able to speak directly to to how they integrating sustainability in, in Malaysia. Um, I mean, they're, they're our closest neighbor. Uh, I mean, in terms of technological advancement, obviously Myanmar, Cambodia, and Laos are in different, you know, uh, but but in terms of, of uh, access to, te to technology, I think Malaysia is probably the, the closest. Mm. Thank you. Uh, any other questions uh, from uh, our friends listening? Um, somebody asked about how you became a sustainably supervisor. I think you already talked about that. You have kind of roundabout way from I think, Yeah, I mean, having part of it is having I had experience working on film sets. Mm -hmm. So but also my master's degree in 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 in, in environmental studies and with, I had an emphasis on sustainability. So mm -hmm. I, you know, that provided a 
I think a, a, a structure for Disney, you know, I think uh, there are many ways though to work in sustainability. I mean, you know, uh, um, you know, we'll, we'll, if there's season two, we'll be hiring. <laughs> um, but I, but, you know, we, I think that, that getting experience working, working on, on sets, working, you know, getting certified by, I mean, it's a free certification, doing things that, that show that you're, that you're, that you're interested in having, you know, um, is, is also really helpful. Mm. Do you think that, um, the film crews in Thailand are now more aware of sustainability practice? I think they're starting to. I mean, I think it's it's really slow. You have to remember there's a lot of people. Um right. I mean, my experience in 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 working in in recycling in 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 uh California was that I worked in in one of the richest counties in America where you know recycling education has been integrated into schools for for close to 20 years or more, longer and you still have uh you know at large festivals and and you know we work at the county it, 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 sort of these county fairs you don't really have that here but be 15,000 people 20,000 people in a day come through and you'd still struggle with 60% of people putting recycling into the wrong container and and all that so so i think it's it's a really a work in progress i think it's also um uh consistently reminding people um uh you know it, it's I, i i think reaching everybody is eventually seeing seeing that we're committed to it seeing that people care about it is really important so along those lines i i'm i'm i feel uh I feel like we've definitely made inroads for sure. Um, and and we have a lot, lot more work to do. Great. Thank you so much. Um, it's It's been really educational. And uh, I think uh, it's, uh, it's new for pretty much all of us, I think. And, and I hope that uh, there will be more interest and awareness and, and I think we'll CCCL will learn as well, and we we would hope to uh, support our young filmmakers or anyone interested to uh, you know start um, you know having more um, practices that will uh, make our home a better place, a cleaner place. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much, David, and. I'm I'm sure there will be more opportunities in the future that we can have conversations like this. And thank you, participants, for you know being hanging on with us and for your questions. All the questions that I asked uh, came from uh, from you mostly, and um, they were really interesting. And I hope that that will uh, start and spark more interest. Yeah, I want one thing I wanted to say is. Um... Uh, I, if anybody would like to reach out to me, um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy to 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 please please do. I mean, and David at livingfilms.com, um, and if if you have further questions or, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be a resource. And it's been my pleasure. I think this is really important work, so I'm super appreciative. Thank you so much. And uh, for all of you, before you go. Uh, I have a few things uh, to ask. So tell us <laughs> what you think. Uh, give us a little a uh, little feedback. Uh, here are the QR code. You can use your phone to uh, answer questions um, or you can type in a QR code is not convenient. Haslights.com slash sus. T film, Sest film, okay? So um, I'm going to leave uh, this screen on. So you just uh, go on and uh, give us a few, uh, you know, um, feedback. 
you know let us let us know what we do right or what what we could improve you know uh, in talks like this and um we hope that we will uh we will see you again and just you know um you can contact us. We have Facebook, you know, go to our website and you, you will see all kinds of uh, ways to contact us. Let me check our chat room. Okay. I uh, I put uh, e uh, David's email, david at livingfilms.com, right? On the chat box. That's okay. correct, yes. Mm -hmm. And here, I don't know, David. Do you do you see the chat box? Here, uh, we have, yeah, uh, we have a message for you. Thank you, David. I never thought that this conversation in climate change would revolve around not only in its visibility, also, but also in the production. This reminds me to produce films uh, more inclined to in uh, to keeping the environmental safe and preserved. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. That's beautiful. Thank you, David and Arth, and the rest of the team at CCCL. A very good overview. I hope to see the BTS at the fest festival in February. Us too. We want to see that. Okay. <laughs> um, I do too. <laughs>